sustainable development without dealing with energy issues. Somehow when the global community in 1999 and 2000 adopted the Millennium Development Goals, they left energy out. No mention of energy. And of course, if you're an Indian or Sierra Leonean or African in general, you say, wait a minute, we don't have enough. Our economies cannot grow without access to energy. Our women and girls are spending 20 hours a week collecting firewood and water. I mean, that's the life of a woman or, or a girl in a poor village in India or in Africa. And so we're saying, wait a minute, how do these guys think the hospitals will run? How do they think we'll have access to clean water and sanitation if you can't pump it? You need energy to do that. How do you grow food without irrigation? And energy helps you do that irrigation. In Africa, 80%, 80% of food processing after it's harvested is done by women in addition to working on the farm. So how can you talk about women's economic empowerment without access to energy? So one key challenge we had, how do you develop a narrative that is acceptable to the global community? That Africa and India can sit at the same table with the United States and they do not quarrel about what energy means. It's all about narrative. So we had to find the right narrative. And so we came up with the whole phrase, a sustainable energy for all. We looked at energy and we said, well, there are three issues we deal with. There are many ways you can look at energy, but let's look at three. First, ending energy poverty. 1.3 billion people without access to electricity is not acceptable in this world when we know the technologies are there. You also have 2.7 billion people using charcoal and firewood for their primary energy source. That's not fair. That's almost one third of mankind relying on charcoal and firewood for their primary energy need. Second, countries need to grow. They need to create wealth for their people. They need to industrialize. That's the dream of every nation. I mean, we call the richest countries the highly industrialized countries, you know, the G8. Of course, everybody else wants to be highly industrialized. How do we ensure that economic growth and wealth, inclusive growth and prosperity, and it cannot happen without energy. You can't power these economies to grow at 7%, 9% without reliable, affordable, cheap energy. That's another challenge. And third, how do you do those both? End energy poverty, power economic growth, and at the same time, keep us below two degrees temperature rise. Very difficult. Because remember, energy systems, production, distribution, and use account for 60 to 70% of greenhouse gas emissions people access to energy so they have prosperity, so they have social development, but at the same time you keep them below two degrees. And we believe it is possible. In order to do that, that's why we say you need partnerships at various levels. So we need the whole UN system working together to be able to do this. But more importantly, we need innovative ways to convince companies to invest. And the companies will tell you, we'll only invest if the public policy has TLC, not tender loving care. Transparency in the public policy that the population and the legislature pass the legislation that is fair to all, very transparently. You need longevity. That public policy has to stay in place for at least 20 years. Because energy systems are expensive. When you build a dam, it's for 50, 60 years. When you build a power plant, it is for that long as well. When you want to change the transmission systems, has to be for a long time. So longevity in public policy. Because the guy will borrow money to begin to build a power plant. If a new government comes in, as they do in Africa, and change the law again, the guy has already borrowed his money. So it's a disincentive. Credibility of the public policy. That's why the, the guys in Deutsche Bank say it's TLC. Transparency, longevity, credibility. The challenge in India is big. Huh? Over 700 million people still using firewood, charcoal, and cow dung. How do you move that needle? And we are convinced, and that's the opportunity we see here, that India can lead that revolution. They can be the next frontier for energy innovation 
if we really want to know what needs to be done about energy anywhere in the world, come to India. China is well advanced now. But in India, you feel the complexity, but you see the opportunity too, and why they must industrialize to create wealth and opportunity for their people. Thank you very much. Do you think that uh, hydrogen is a sustainable energy? Hydrogen. 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 H